Hello and welcome to Spicy's Hidden Worlds. This is the third episode of The Catch. First up is the Silver Y, particular favourite of mine because it is a good sign that there's migration going on. Four wing is 13 to 21 millimetres. This moth has been recorded in all months of the year, so throughout their entire year they have been recorded, but you'd mainly see them between May and September. As I say, it is an immigrant, which means they fly here from Northern Europe, France, places like that. It is easily recognised by the Y mark on its wing, although there is a few similar species, and a lot of these are very interesting rare species, uh, that it could be confused with. But if you look at it in front of a book, it isn't too difficult to tell them apart. Although it is an immigrant to this country, they do breed here every single summer. Okay, the next moth, not particularly interesting, but it has a bit of a weird name, the Brightline Brown Eye. Resident and common, four wing, 14 to 90 millimetres, mostly one generation, and they can be seen from May to late July. Not particularly interesting moth, there isn't a lot to say about it, but it's got a bit of an interesting name, I suppose. Again, another common moth, and one I am asked about a few times. This is the Buff Ermine, quite similar to the White Ermine, if you want to look on previous catch videos where I've had one of those. Four wing is 17 to 22 millimetres, resonant common, and one generation between mid May and July. The next moth is the large yellow underwing, or as I call it, the large yellow blunderwing. Four wing is 21 to 26 millimetres, it's a resident and it's also believed to be an immigrant. They can be seen between June and October, even into November, although the peak is around late August. The large yellow underwing can be extremely abundant. In fact, you can get hundreds in a single night in a moth trap. Now, because there's so many of them, they very often end up in people's houses. And this is where the name Blunderwing comes from. Now, they're a very powerful, strong flyer, but they don't seem to have much direction with that. They can, they just seem to fly in straight lines into things, bounce off of things. They're that, that moth that's quite large and is banging around your house. As you can see, they're brown on the top of the wings, although that is extremely variable with patterns in different colours. But the shape will always be the same. And the underwings are an orangey colour, although it's called yellow underwing, it's more orange. The next moth is the figure of 80, and you can probably see where it got that name from. As you can see, it's got 80 written on its wing. The forewing is 16 to 20 millimetres, resident common, uh, possible immigrant, and there's one generation in late May to July. Okay, the next moth is called the buff tip. Very interesting little moth. It looks like a broken twig, as you can see. If you put it on a silver birch twig, you probably never tell the difference. The middle looks like silver birch. The end of its head is flat and looks like a broken twig. It's even got the colour marks of the bark at the edges and wood down the side. Amazing camouflage in a moth. The males are 22 to 26 millimetres, whereas females measure in at 26 to 34 millimetres, so the females are larger. One generation, late May to July, is resident and a common moth. But obviously would be hard to be seen if it was sitting on the right sort of background. Okay, the next moth is the Puss Moth. 29 to 38 millimetres, so it's quite a big moth. One generation between May and July, it's resident and common. Now, I say it's common, but I only catch two or three of these a year at most. So whenever I do catch one, I'm normally quite happy about it because they're a big moth. They're interesting to look at and photograph. Okay, the next moth is a very nice looking moth, the Cream Spot Tiger, 25 to 32 millimetres, one generation from late May to early July. It's resident and local, though it is more common along the south coast. I don't catch too many of these in the garden. Whenever I do, it's always with a southerly wind, so I'm now led to believe that the moths are inhabiting the front edges of the island, and then with that southerly wind, it brings them inland. As you can see, they're a very striking looking moth, and then you see the underwing, and it's even more striking. There's a few tiger moths and they're all very nice looking, but the more common one is known as the garden tiger and I will catch one of those later in the year. And we're back onto hawk moths. Now this is a pine hawk moth, as you can see, it's lost some scales on its thorax. That's just what happens to moths over time, they do get wear and tear and he may have been banging around in the trap a bit, but this won't affect him in his life as it were, it just means he's not quite as nice looking. 35 to 41 millimeters, one generation between May and early August. It's resident and local, although they are more common around pine plantations. Of all the common hawk moths, I don't catch that many pine hawk moths, probably because there isn't much pine here for them, the caterpillars to feed on, and I'll only catch three or four in a year. In the last video, I showed you a picture of a small elephant hawk moth. Well, I caught one the following day. 21 to 25 millimetres, one generation from May to July. It's resident and local. Uh, it is caught widely throughout the UK. There isn't much in the UK you can't catch them, but they're more localised into spots. A very nice little moth, superficially very similar to the elephant hawk moth, though size and pattern will tell you the difference very quickly. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, maybe consider sharing it with some other people you know who might enjoy this video too. The eyed hawk moth is very easy to recognise if you look under its forewing on its hindwing, where a poplar hawk moth I showed you in the last video has red spots. This